Hello and welcome to Learn Exam Study Tips for free with Miss Estrick. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through my top seven revision techniques, all based on neuroscience to help you get your exam success. So to start with then the neuroscience part of it, your brain. Your brain has an incredible storage strength. And that's because you have 86 million neurons, which are the nerve cells in your brain. And those neurons, when they connect to each other via these gaps called synapses, you get networks. Those networks are the neural pathways. And all of those connections are how you can then retrieve that stored strength. However, you do have very, very poor retrieval strength. So what that means is making these pathways, if you don't have those pathways or if they're not intact anymore, it is like a maze like this. You've got the information in there somewhere, but it's very hard to find it. And that's probably what you experience sometimes when you're in a test. You know you've got that fact somewhere, but you really struggle to remember it or find it there in your brain. So I'm gonna be going through how you can improve that. So if we think about learning like this diagram, we've got lots of random facts that have been told to you by your teacher. It might be your first lesson on osmosis and you've been told about water potential, different solutions, hypertonic, isotonic, and you've just got all of these keywords floating around. Unconnected information. You probably won't be able to remember it very well and you won't be able to understand it to apply it to a question. So what you need to do to learn and be able to remember is turn that into knowledge, which means you can then apply it, and a long-term memory. And the way to do that is we need to connect the dots between all of those key terms and facts you were told to make sure you do understand you've got that knowledge and it's a long-term memory. So how do you do that then? These are the top seven tips based on neuroscience research, educational research, for how to revise the best to improve those long-term memories. So all of these seven I'm going to be going through, and then space repetition is your strategy towards it. So number one, flashcards. Now I did a poll on my Instagram account to see who uses flashcards and over 73, 75% of you said you do. But my next question was, do you use them correctly? And that's what you're now gonna be able to answer. So there's certain things about how to create a flashcard. And number one, that is what I always say to students is, let me see your flashcards, because quite often you have your keyword and then on the other side, you've written half of the textbook. That's not a flashcard, that is a card that you've squashed your textbook onto and that's not going to be helpful. So number one with flashcards is you should have a question and an answer or a definition but with very, very limited text on the other side. So for example on that one I had mitochondria, turn over just one sentence, site of aerobic respiration. And that way you can then know that for that one small piece of information, did you remember it or not? rather than overwhelming your card with so many facts that it's not going to be helpful. Number two, use images. The use of images will help you remember the facts, but also for some topics and some subjects, on not just biology, you do have to be able to recognise the diagrams. So cell surface membrane, you need to know that this is what the cell surface membrane looks like. So some of your cards, you should have the structure and the diagram on the other side. And that's what I've got here, my set of cards, where we've got the picture and the structure. When I looked at it, if I could remember that this is the Golgi vesicle, an apparatus, then it goes to the no side. This one here, I think I'm struggling to remember that this is the ribosome, so unfortunately it's going to go to the try again. So that's the idea for your pictures. Now that also introduced the lightness system, and this is how you can use your flashcards. So instead of just having your pack, flicking through them, you need to have a process so you can actually be efficient with your time. Which can you remember with ease and therefore you have the connections and the memory already and which you're struggling to remember and therefore that's what you should be practicing and focus your time on. So here's an example of my cell surface membrane. If I can remember that controls the entry and exit, it goes on the tick side. Mitochondria, as we just said, site of aerobic respiration, if you remember it, it goes to the tick. Lysosomes, mm, often they don't get remembered. Probably going to have to try that again because I didn't remember that one. 
So this is the idea. Go through your whole pack and see which side is it. Tick, you can remember. Cross, you're not remembering it as well. So you have to try again. And then once you have done that, you can go through your pack of cards again. Don't need to try those ones just yet because you just showed you did know it. Try those ones again. And now I recognise that that was chloroplast. Oh, still can't remember those lysosomes. So chloroplast, that can go. Have to do the lysosomes again until you can remember. And that's what we mean by the lightness system. It's making sure you are sifting out between what you did remember and you didn't. It's not necessarily just doing it all in one go like I showed there. It could be that instead of just a tick and cross, you have this labelled as daily, um, twice a week or and once a week. And the ones where it's you couldn't remember, those are the cards that you test yourself on daily. The ones that you could remember, only test yourself once a week. And this is to be efficient with your time. So you've got so much that you have to do, it is difficult. So find these strategies to be efficient with your time. And also this will strengthen the connections which are weaker. So final tip is shuffle your cards. And there's two different things I mean by this. First of all, just literally shuffle them so you're not just learning the pattern of what's coming next, but also turn them different directions. So some of them, it's now not the it's not now the key word, you've got to see the definition and remember what structure it was. So you're testing both sides of the card. Can you see the name and recognise the picture or the um, function and can you do it the other way around as well? So that's your flashcards, how to make, how to use. Next is blurting. So you can see me go through a whole example of a blurt here. Step one, pick your topic and write everything you can remember in a set amount of time. So that could be, I'm doing a blurt on DNA in this video and I set myself five minutes for this example to draw and write everything you can remember. Now you aren't doing this with a textbook or with anyone else. It has to be completely from your memory because the point is we want to see what options and what long-term memories you already have and what are you struggling to remember or maybe what have you remembered in. So you do have to be really strict with your time limit so you can be efficient but also that you're not looking at anything else. You're just drawing it down. And you don't have this neat or pretty, that's not the point. There's no point at all in rewriting notes just so they're neat or so they're pretty. All that does is just throw the facts in your brain again, not making any connections, and we call that passive learning. It doesn't help. So step two, now you get a bright color pen and fill in what you couldn't remember. And this is now where you do use your textbook or your notes or the specification. And this is what you do instead of rewriting notes. You are still using your textbook where you need it, but you're doing it in an active way. So it's active recall. You're actually using your thought, your brain, rather than just passively reading. And there we go. That is my completed blurt. So we can see I've got what I could remember and in the bright pink, what I couldn't remember. And you could now use this as a springboard to see which bits were you struggling to remember as well. That's what you need to review further. Now you don't just do this blurt once, you need to do this same DNA blurt for this example multiple times. So maybe try it again in three days or five days or a week and then try it again after that and again after that. And what you should find is the amount that you've had to write in your bright colour will decrease and decrease and decrease until eventually all of that information is connected and in your long term memory and you can remember it all. Tip three, multiple encoding. Now this is linked to where we said making these neural pathways. And if you have multiple stimuli, so smell, sound, sight, you actually make more pathways. Because you're not just making a pathway based on what you're reading, the text. You have a pathway for that information, but it also links with a smell. You might have noticed before that sometimes there are particular smells and it brings a memory flooding back to you. And that's because of this multiple encoding. 
So manipulate that science with your revision. Maybe when you learn one of your particular GCSEs, light a scented candle and light a different one for another one. Or it could be you're wearing a particular perfume because then on exam day, when you're going into your biology GCSE, wear that perfume and it will help you remember. You can do the same with music as well, but if you're going to use music, you do have to make sure it's not got lyrics, any words, because if you do have words, then that is going to interrupt you being able to link the um, stimulus of words to what you're learning and it gets confused with the song. And that does cut out a lot of music, unfortunately. So that might not be the best one for you to try, but if you don't mind music where there are no lyrics, that could be quite a good one as well. Or it could be images. So have images in your notes that you have from your lessons or from your blurting, and then you can associate those visuals as well as with what you've learnt. So this links to the idea, as we said, multiple encoding helps to encourage the making of multiple pathways and therefore you have these stronger memories. Tip four, spaced repetition. Now this is to do with your strategy rather than a particular activity. So Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. So a psychologist who looked at memory in humans and shockingly, this is how quickly you forget something you've just learned when you don't review it. So you might have just been in your lesson, learned something new, and you'll have very, very quick loss within the first 20 minutes. In the next hour, you've forgotten over half of it. One day, six days later, you can only remember 25% of what you learnt in that lesson. So what this means is if you don't review the content until right before the exam, you're actually going to have to relearn it from scratch. It's not going to be revision. You're learning from scratch and it's much, much harder. So instead, if you space out reviewing your topics, you will never drop down to a very, very low percentage memory. And actually, the more times you review it, the more you'll remember in between each review. And what the studies show is five reviews is key. So if you look over a piece of um, your specification five times before your mock or before your GCSC, your A-level, A-level or whatever exam you're taking, you will have much, much higher percentage memory. Now, this might seem a bit overwhelming, this particular example, because it's split into so many subheadings. And if you do that for all your subjects, where on earth are you going to get that time from? But you could do it more broadly. But also, just to point out, these revisits don't have to be lengthy. It could be your first revisit is you're going to make flashcards, try them once. Second revisit, a week later, you're going to try flashcards again. Third revisit, let's go for a blurt. Fourth revisit, I'm going to do a blurt and some exam questions. And then the last one could be a mixture of all of them. So it doesn't have to be lengthy, but it does have to be spaced and it does have to be repeated five times if you want to have that maximum memory. So topic five is how to really encourage these connections. So you have really strong long-term memories and graphic organizers are great for this. So I'm gonna do an example here with the ecology topic in biology. I've separated out the key words into this circle and what I'm gonna do is literally make connections between them. So drawing a line and then writing on the line why there is a link. So population is all the individuals of a species. That means they're living. That's an example of a biotic factor. And so on and so on. So I've done that for the rest. And that really encourages you to fully understand and remember the definitions and see how the whole topic links together. And if you can make those connections of the whole topic, you'll have a much better knowledge and you'll remember it better and more in the long run. Other activities that help or count as graphic organisers, Venn diagrams, so you're looking at the similarities and differences between keywords or processes. Mind maps, so similar to this, but you might want to have more visuals, more diagrams. And comparison tables as well, again, help you to really think about connections. Tip six is turning text to an image, or you can do the reverse. So what I've got here is, after reading a paragraph of text about glycolysis in respiration, instead of writing that out as notes, I've done an active recall or revision strategy. 
meaning I've not just recopied something, instead I've forced myself to turn that text into an image. So that then checks you've understood it. It's also multiple encoding because you've now got text linked to a diagram. You could do this the other way around. It might be that that was the diagram in a textbook and instead you need to test yourself that you've understood it and turn that into a paragraph. So for example, for this one, I could say glycolysis starts with glucose, which has six carbon atoms. That is then reacted with two ATP molecules, um, which are hydrolyzed, and the inorganic phosphate is added on to make a six carbon unstable intermediate, and so on and so on. So lastly, if you have stayed to the end, good for you, because it has been a long video, but tip seven, practice questions. And there's different types. So you could go for high frequency, low state quizzes, which you can do throughout your GCSE and A-level course. So I'm doing that on my Instagram account. Every day I'm posting multiple GCSE and A-level biology questions where it's low stake meaning there's no consequence to getting it wrong or getting it right. It's just there to have that high frequency testing of a range of topics to keep it in your mind and for you to see what you might need to go and revise again. The next stage would be practice questions or even whole pass papers. And I've got lots of those on my website, mrsetrick.com for GCSE and A-level. Split into the different topics or on the tabs as well, it's split into the skills. So you might feel you need to practice your application or long answer questions, maths, practical, whatever it is, I've split it up by the practice questions, but also loaded up all of the past papers, which are currently unlocked. When you do these past questions or past papers, I do suggest as well, really make sure towards the time when you're getting closer and closer to your exam, you need to be trying them in exam conditions without your notes as well, because part of the struggle of the exam is the time pressure and making sure you're reading the questions thoroughly. So do be strict with yourself that you are really sticking to that as well so you can practice and improve. And when you come to mark it, really scrutinise the mark scheme because unfortunately, especially in biology, the examiners will be doing that. So when you're marking it, don't let yourself think that, oh yeah, that's close enough, I'll go for it because the examiners definitely won't do that. So be really strict and stick to the marks. So that is it. Those are my top seven revision strategies. I really hope that they do bring you some exam success. And if you have found this helpful today, then please give it a thumbs up. It was a long video, but I really hope that from at least one of those seven strategies, you'll find something that does work for you. So if you have liked it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for all the latest biology videos, but also exam techniques.